Good morning. Right, let's carry on with this uh, down the garden path organised by um, Rachel Roxy Creations. I'll put a link down below. Her sister Sarah as well. So anyway, um, vegetable plot. I completely forgot what we were doing for a second there. Uh, yeah, veggies. Um, I'm seeing loads and beautiful ones. Um, I went on Pinterest and found this. Let me just see if you can see that. Yeah. Um, I love this uh yeah there's some really inspiring in little bits there definitely going to try this leaf here um I've done that before it's a woven one um I'm not sure how to do the red cabbages but uh, I can't really see the detail it looks like a like a bundle of wool and then um I don't know open sort of uh blanket stitch there yeah cauliflowers love cauliflowers red cabbage love it um yeah i'm gonna do all the vegetables i like <laughs> uh green cabbage carrots love but i don't know these i think these look like radishes but um yeah anyway we're gonna play around so i hope you're all well um it's trying to be a sunny day here at least the temperature's risen so that's something we've been below freezing for weeks now which is just crazy um I've decided to extend my garden path mainly because I found this scrap in my bin that I keep for all these bits and bobs so I thought you know what I'll extend let me just put it that way it's really awkward to work with <laughs> um, yeah so I'm going to tuck that under there this is why you leave the edges loose it's a good hint to that Rachel right so that's going to meet up there so I'm just going to do my veggie patches here so I'm thinking I don't know what am I thinking maybe I think the rows are gonna have to come this way I'm not going to do a load because I don't really want to go beyond the length of my um, piece of fabric here I, I am worried it's not going to fit in that box I made but never mind so for the background I was thinking I want I need earth colors so in my marvelous box of scraps I've just turfed out a load of paper ones no you go back there um i've got this fabric sorry called paper stuck to it uh which is um gauze um bandage you know uh yeah i had loads of these in my first aid box and i thought you know i wonder if they'll die and they have done i don't know if you can see it's quite see-through but i i'm trying to remember what i used because i did this ages ago and I think it was just um, Tim, uh, Ranger inks and rust dyeing, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. But as I say, it was a while ago I made these. So anyway, I'm going to pick some pieces because the white is not, it's not earthy, obviously. So I'm going to choose a piece. I'm going to run it under my path and I'm going to use Rachel's method Oh, that'll do nicely. Um, I'm going to use Rachel's method of um, a tiny stitch and a big stitch at the back just to hold it all down. Um, yeah, somebody did comment on my last video about, you know, not using glue, but use uh, applique pins, which I have got, but I still find I'm catching my, these little pins here. I'm still finding I'm catching myself on there. And the glue is brilliant. It really is. I, I get on really well with it. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. But let's face it. Each to their own. It's what we do. Let's just turn that that way. We'll get that edge caught down. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, let's see how we go. I might get some veggies done. Um, I might not. I'm on um, I'm on leave this week, so... I am going to do a little hand sewing project that I've been doing on my own. But I know when I did that the, uh, back to basics hand stitching, well, God, that's got to be two years ago, if not more. Uh, a lot of people said that they were grateful that somebody had taken it right back to absolute basic. And I thought, well, this little thing I've been doing is um, is another you know basic thing to do. Well, that, that works all right, doesn't it? It's very straight. Do I want it straight? Mind you, I think in veggie gardens you do, don't you? 
you have straight edges we're doing it we're not going to faff around with a curly path so I'm going to trim that up there yeah I need to get this done because there'll be another prompt out soon and I'll be behind <laughs> That's better, isn't it? That's really obliterated the white. Cool. Okay. Right. I'm going to stitch this down. I'm going to pause you because, you know, otherwise it will um, be a bit boring. Um, I might put some flowers in amongst it because I know when I used to grow a load of veggies, I used to love growing flowers in between the... Because veggie plots, let's face it, it can be a bit boring, can't they? I used to grow flowers in amongst mine anyway. So, um, right, I shall get that stitched. Um, let's put you there. And I'll come back to you and then hopefully we'll have a bit of time to do some veggies. Um, this is just one strand of embroidery floss. I think it'll work fine. You might see the odd stitch, but yeah, let's not worry too much. I might actually go up and down the path. And maybe do some bits in there. I know, actually, no, I know what I'll do. I will. I'll blanket stitch the edge. I'm worried it'll fray otherwise. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, I will back to you in a moment when I've stitched that down. It won't be long. Right, so I've stitched the background. I'm just doing the last of the blanket stitch edge down there now i got totally distracted by making cauliflowers i've, I've done a practice and i think it's going to work i will show you what they are because while i was stitching this i thought yeah how can i make cauliflowers fairly easily and um that kind of works i will show you what it is bear with me one more stitch I'm not going to go right to the bottom of the um, yeah uh, the soil fabric if you like <laughs> for want of a better word because uh, I don't know what we've got next so I need to be able to tuck it under so I used all six strands just um it wasn't even an anchor thread it's um it's those cheaper ones I don't know yeah just a a cheapy right let's just fasten that off I'll show you my light bulb moment <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has done them I don't know Get off. I've lost my little jar that I was putting all my bits in I know where it's gone oh it's right in front of your face you daft woman right okay that's there I put my glue in it, that's why I couldn't see it. Right, so, um, yeah, these um, cauliflowers, it's a um, Suffolk puff with loads of French knots. Let me show you. I've got this incredibly thin fabric. I think it was a blouse at one point. I don't know if you can see, it's really thin. Um, but it's got some nice variegated greens in it. So I thought that would be perfect for the Suffolk puff. And then I've also found this. I didn't even know I had this. <laughs> so I think I might just cut out some little ladybirds. What I might do is um, put some uh, heat and bond on the back, actually, and then fussy cut these little guys out and then just put them amongst the plants because I think stitching those, I mean, they're tiny. I think it'll just fray and it'll be a disaster. Right, so I've got... Um, I don't know what size these are. I've just cut some squares. <laughs> Um, ruler. They need to be fairly tiny because of proportion. That one was obviously a bigger one. That one's a lot smaller, and I think it could be it could do with being smaller. But what I might do is do three and really scrunch them up next to each other so that they get a little bit more like that. Anyway, I'm rambling as usual. Right, so inches. Let's do the inches. So it's about one and a half by one and a half well done you so uh, this is the lazy person's way of doing circles <laughs> they they're a bit um overly 
but what we're doing yes I should have ironed this fabric no I haven't it was much easier to work with but you know when did I ever make my life easy where's my scrap bowl everything keeps disappearing oh, I don't know <laughs> where have you gone let me go over there oh, need to stretch right so I just cut a square and I just round the corners <laughs> yes I know it's lazy <laughs> When I'm doing loads of these for other projects, I do get the Sizzix machine and I cut them with a die, uh, a circle die, because they do come out an awful lot more precise. But for little cauliflowers, I'm not going to worry. Right. Okay, so we've all made Suffolk puffs. I'm sure we have. Let's choose you. You've got some nice dark green. So. This has got a right and a wrong side, believe it or not, and I think that's the right side. So, well, as I say, we know how to do these, so just a really... I'm not going to turn the edge. Um, I quite like the fact that in this one, it's quite scruffy in the middle. You know, you do you. If you want it all neat and precise, do that. Turn the edge and then just gather it. It's a really thin fabric and I'm constantly stubbing my finger. That's fine. Yes, I should use a thimble. I don't even know where it is actually. I don't get on with thimbles basically. Can't pull too tight because this is a very frayable fabric. Put you around there a bit. Did I put a knot in? Yes, I did. Won't trust it though. Right, so I'm just going to keep my keep that in there. Grab both ends. Give a nice gentle gather. Very small, it's very fiddly, but let's persevere. My hands are freezing. My daughter said to me the other day, Mum, just put your eating on. I said, no, I can't afford it. It's ridiculous, the cost. I will have to turn it on later, though. I felt, um, I feel it's getting a bit damp in the house, so. I've got it set at 12 degrees, which, you know... When you're of a certain age, <laughs> it's actually quite warm. So um, but I'm noticing the cat's getting colder and colder. Bless her. She's getting right under the duvet on my bed now. So I might have to give in, <laughs> put it on for a little while. So let's just faff this around a bit. Yeah, I quite like it that it's scruffy in the middle. Just see what you can see. Oh, excuse me. Are you going to focus? Probably not. there all right so it's nice and scruffy in the middle now is he going to focus down here probably not there we are right so yeah you end up with quite a nice scruffy middle which i personally like so, with this one i'm going to stitch it in the middle um i'm going to start it away a bit actually i might do the i'm sort of thinking cabbages uh so cauliflower cabbages i might do red cabbage along there actually just to well i could do me carrots i don't know we'll just play around with it right so who's there um yeah so i'm going to stitch that in the middle of the row and then the other two i can squidge up if you like technical term squidge so i have got all six strands of white just white um anchor thread so let's just get that in the middle I'm doing two wraps 
and then just kind of aiming it now what I'm not doing is putting it too tight because as we know cauliflower is quite lumpy and bumpy so we'll just leave it lumpy and bumpy I was thinking about beads actually I was thinking of just you know putting a load of beads in the middle because I've got some little white uh, pearly things but I thought no no you had planned on doing French knots so just stop just do them that's what I'm doing It's hard to keep it in the frame and the stitch at times. Whoops, day. Yeah, I think the beads would have worked. Let me show you. They're little little round pearls. I think they would have worked actually, but maybe we'll do them on the other side, I don't know. We're just gonna play around like we do. Tighten slightly. Thank you. And then what I did on the other one, I started piling them, piling them on top of each other. Again, two wraps. I'm doing this completely cack-handed. Because we all know that cauliflowers just have like a big white head in the middle and green on the outside. You wanted to get really specific you could do little leaves inside that are coming over and covering the cauliflower but that's a little bit over the top i think that'll do let's just do one more there i went a little bit too loose with that one that first one Come here. One. <laughs> I give up. I'll just let go of the fabric. I'll just tie that one down slightly a bit more. I might need the pliers for this one. Yeah, there's the back it's a really nice stitch that actually i've not um not seen that one before so yeah and then just faff with it really i don't think i've got it quite in the middle actually so maybe i'll stop being lazy and actually iron my fabric and then it'll probably sit a lot nicer Yeah, you could go in and pull those leaves right over with some green thread, actually. But anyway, there we are. One cauliflower-ish. <laughs> yeah, I might do that, actually. I might go in and just pull these. Just a simple stitch through there just to pull those leaves up a little bit. Or am I getting too fussy again? Right. Um, let's see how long we've been going. Sorry, I've completely lost track of time. I usually keep a timer with me. I can't see the timer. Okay. Um, right. I think I might. Should I make that do? I might do a carrot. Let me do a carrot. <laughs> it's, this is very much an experiment because in my scrap box, which 
it's a blooming mess um i've got this stuff eyelash yarn eyelash yarn and i'm wondering if it'll stitch because it'll make a most fantastic carrot top if it will don't know i've got a scrap here let's try that let's see if it'll allow me to stitch it which if it does it'll make awesome carrot tops as i said the trick is has it gone through yeah cool let's drop a, drop a little bit horrible feeling oh there you go nah, need the hole bigger there's a little side step so it's kind of like what's it called turkey stitch isn't it I think I'm doing right. Although we don't need to cut it. Really not wanting to play terribly well. That works. Let's just cut that off for a minute. I'll get a bigger eyed needle. That to me is a carrot top. So if I do an orange fr uh, French knot and then have that coming out of the top, that's going to be a carrot, isn't it? Yep. Now then, I found this. I was looking at oranges and they were really bright orange and I thought, well, that's not actually the colour that an orange, an orange, a um, carrot is. Uh, so this is an anchor 1315 it's a variegated and it's quite nice colors they're sort of orangey-ish and i think they might look pretty good i'm going to try that again with your indulgence i might leave that on there i'm just going to take it off and use that needle but as it was a bit of a you know what to um eyeball right. they're chenille needles they're lovely to work with with their big eyes so let's try that again and then we'll do some on a le jardin Is that going to be big enough? That's the only thing. It's quite tiny. Ah, come on. Okay, I don't think one is going to be enough. So if I do a very close bunch of three. going to be a bit B isn't it let's just try two Ugh, go under yeah that could work 
it's just now the, the trick will be will this go through because it's rather hairy so if I get it right in the middle Don't worry, it looks a hot mess at the minute. Let's tidy it up. <laughs> Let's do that locking stitch. She's just pulled it all through. Great, really helpful. But you know what? That looks all right. <laughs> Good job, it's only a practice one. It caught the um, um, the loop, but I might just get away with that. Well, it looks carroty to me. Yeah, it's caught the loop, so let's pull those bits out. There it is, there's the little loop. He's come out now, thank you. I need to get a really nice, fine pair of um, embroidery scissors. We ain't got none. I'll have to get some. That. Definitely looks like a carrot. Cool. Okay, we'll do a couple of those. <clears throat> Quick little experiment. That stuff's going to be a nightmare to work with. <laughs> but it's so effective, isn't it? So, if we do a line of carrots across there, let's see if I can see what time I've been going. Sorry, I'm going to have to put my hand under. Oh, 27 minutes, right. Okay, we'll do a couple of carrots. Come on, cute. Oh, fiddle. I'm trying to keep the tension on there and show you at the same time. And keep her. A nice straight row, if possible. I think you can scream with it. What's annoying me? That long thread. Let me get rid of that. If 
I keep grabbing that and not the needle. Yeah, the orange was really, let me show you, it was like, whoa, <laughs> well too orange, because it's a wool, and I thought, oh, that'd be perfect, you know, just one um, French knot done in that would be the right consistency, if you like, um, but yeah, it's a little bit, it's like carrots grown in a nuclear reactor type orange, which we don't. Do these three carrots and then we'll um put that in the ought pot. Just double check that screen. Yes. Paranoid about going out of screen. There's nothing more frustrating as a watcher. This stuff wants to shred instantly. Okay. Yes. Bright green eyelash yarn. Scrap box saves the day. If I can get it threaded. I might need one with a bigger. Grab that one. Just double check what size that was because you might want to know that it was a size 22 chenille John James. I use those, you can use what you like. Um, don't think I need to worry about a knot, I'm not going to worry about a knot. Ha -ha. I'll try those cauliflowers with those beads actually because I keep looking at them and I'm like, they might look really good actually. We'll try. I will try and then I'll show you if it works. So what I'm going to try and do is get right in the middle there. Give myself a little bit there. Do a loop. Leave it quite long actually because you can I can always trim it obviously and then just get it in there. Come on, <sighs> cute. Just a little hole in the stitch there. Same again. I think I'm doing this right. <laughs> You need to behave yourself. Stay over your own side. Two. I might squeeze some more in the middle. Let's just try these for now. See what we've got. Oh, don't pull tight. Yeah, 
I'm going to leave them longer and then we just trim just to the seams much easier. Um, yeah, I'll fasten it off. Uh, I might do another row underneath it actually. No, I won't fasten it off. I'm just going to leave that there for now. Park it. And let's snip these things. gone wrong there is that just yeah that is the thread okay That to me looks really good. Cool. Happy with that. There we are. We have a cauliflower and we have some carrots. I will do some more, definitely. Should have stitched that down. Damn. Right, let me, um, well, what I'll do while I'm, when I come back next time, I'll get some interface, uh, you know, um, heat and bond on the back of these. I'm going to stick some ladybirds and things around, because that'll just add a pop of colour, if nothing else. And you do want ladybirds in your garden, because they're really good at eating the aphids, as we all know. Right, <laughs> I'm waffling, as you can tell. So there's me carrots. Is it going to focus? No more. There we are, fluffy carrots. And yeah, I need to work on that a little bit. I might, as I say, I might stitch up, you know, and just sort of bring it in a bit like that. Because it's kind of what cauliflowers are more like. But there, so yeah, I've got my path continuing, done the um, background of the earth, and then. Um, yeah, I'm going to put some more flowers, I think. I did make some more little um, yo-yos. Or Suffolk, um, Suffolk Puffs yo-yos, whatever you call them. Um, yeah, so there we are. I'll leave that here for now. Um, I'll carry on doing my carrots. When I do another vegetable, I'll stitch the cat, stick the camera back on. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'll have to expand my veggie patch. Right. Oh, gosh, we're going to have focus again. Right, that's it. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye.